Ani Bojo, hello and good afternoon everyone. Mino Kasheb, uh, Ross Romano Indigenous Cause, Bawating and Dojaba. Name is, my name is Ross Romano and I'm from here in Sault Ste. Marie. Gachi Jaji Gawab Namba. It's a pleasure to be with you all again. Pleasure to be here back at uh, SIS. I want to start off by uh, recognizing the lands that we are on. These are the lands of the Robinson Huron Treaty Territory, lands of the Anishinaabe people, Garden River, Batchewana First Nation, as well as all of our Metis friends and urban Indigenous partners as well. I think it's important that we recognize that we're, it's, it's a privilege for us to be able to enjoy these lands and certainly to recognize that we were not here first, and it is truly a privilege. I want to say thank you very much to Tony Porco and the team at SIS for hosting us here today. Good afternoon, everyone, and I want to give a very special welcome back to Sault Ste. Marie, to our Premier, Premier Doug Ford, and to our Minister of Mines, George Peary, who is with us as well today. I also want to note that our Mayor, Matt Shoemaker, is here, and I welcome him as well to joining us. Today is uh, some special news for Northern Ontario. When a mine opens in Northern Ontario, Sault Ste. Marie wins. When a mine opens in Northern Ontario, Ontario wins. Think of all the items that we use every single day, from smartphones to electric vehicles, from steel to diamonds and gold. It all comes from a mine in Northern Ontario. We are building Ontario, and in order to ensure that we can continue to build an Ontario that we want to see the future of uh, grow, of course, we need a, a mining sector that is booming. And in order to have a booming mining sector, that depends on a well-integrated supply chain. Look no further than right here in Sault Ste. Marie, where steel manufactured at Algoma Steel, where beams fabricated right here at SIS, where concrete pumps from Apex Cranes and conveyor belts from Belterra are all critical pieces that are going into mines in Northern Ontario. Investment in Northern Ontario's mining sector supports so many local businesses and the thousands of people that they employ. Our government is building Ontario, and Sault Ste. Marie is an essential build building block to getting it done. I want to thank you all again for joining us, and I would like to uh, now welcome to the podium to say a few words uh, the owner of SIS, uh, Superior Industrial Solutions, Tony Porco. Tony? Thanks, Russ. Um, I just want to welcome everybody to our uh, humble city, Sault Ste. Marie, um, Premier Doug Ford, um, you know, taking out the time to come here and, you know, make an announcement, uh, and, uh, you know, Ross Romano taking uh, time out of his busy schedule as well, uh, uh, Mayor Matt Shoemaker, uh, and uh, Minister of uh, Mines, uh, George uh, Peary. We've got some uh, really important people here, and I think that uh, going forward and working with the mines, uh, we've had quite a few jobs with the mines. We were lucky enough to build structures and beams for uh, Alamos uh, Mine and Cargill Mine and other mines. And, you know, there's more in the future, as I can see, and really appreciate the support um, for us uh, at SIS and for our city. Um, thank you very much. Thank you again, Tony. And now I'd like to uh, welcome to the podium uh, Dr. Gunning. Uh, Dr. Uh, Gunning is uh, here uh, to uh, say a few words. Uh, so uh, please, uh, uh, Dr. Gunning, come on up. Yes, I'm Mike Gunning. I'm the CEO of VR Resources. We do early stage blue sky mineral exploration. And you can consider that essentially the front-end R&D of the mining and mineral resource sector, the front-end R&D to downstream technologies like the plant that we're at today. We discovered some rare earth element mineralization up north of Cochrane, west of Otter Rapids. And for two years, we obtained funding from this OJEP program to advance our drilling and to advance that R&D work. And really, I'm just here to say two things. Uh, firstly, although my company is responsible for the bulk of our exploration funding, I want the Premier and the Minister to know that for my small company, the funding that we receive from OJEP has made a real difference in our ability to advance this discovery. And second, to commend the Ministry staff. It's one thing to have a program concept 
It's another to execute. And from my perspective on the industry side, our ability to program application funding and exploration reporting has been seamless. What that allows me to do is to translate OJEP funds into drilling. And that's where I can contribute to industries like this is to advance our discoveries. So with that, we would like to be back in Auto Rapids in April. And the objective is very straightforward. Can we provide raw material supply for downstream industries, new sustainable technologies in Ontario like this plant? It's not easy, the R&D world that I work in, and this OJEP funding is helping. It's making a real difference. Thank you. Now I'd like to uh, welcome to the podium uh, uh, the MPP for Timmins and our Minister of Mines, George Peary. Thank you. Minister George Peary. Uh, thank you, MPP Romano. Romano Ross is a great friend of ours for your introduction. I'm humbled to join Premier Ford, MPP Romano, Dr. Gunning, and Tony here in beautiful Sault Ste. Marie today. As a Northern MPP, it is inspir inspirational to have a Premier who is dedicated to getting results for the people of Northern Ontario. Here in the North, we know the mineral sector is vital to our prosperity. But I believe that our government, under Premier Ford's leadership, has helped the rest of Ontario realize how important mining is for the economy and to the technologies we use in our daily lives. Ontario's mining sector deserves to be celebrated. We are already a global leader, and I know we can do better. We can once again be the world's number one destination for mining. That is why our government is supporting this vital industry that will set up our entire province for success, especially for the northern and the indigenous communities. Our critical mineral strategy is accomplishing this goal by integrating our mining sector in the north with the battery and electric vehicle manufacturing sector in, of the south. Our government knows that our, the supply chain for mining starts out in the bush with the prospectors and explorers making geological discoveries that it will one day become the future mines and new economic engines of the, across the north. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Honourable Premier Doug Ford to speak more about the investments our government is making in this sector. Premier. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And I'm so thrilled to be back here in the beautiful Sault Ste. Marie alongside our champions right, right behind me, Minister Perry and MPP Ross Romano. I, I, I got to tell you something. I call him Rossi, but you know something? Ross does an incredible job representing the people of the Sioux here. And things happen in the Sioux because of Ross, it's plain and simple. I also want to welcome Mayor Matthew Shoemaker. And I remember, Mayor, before you got elected, we, we met at a, at a function and I wished you all the best. So congratulations on winning the election. And a big thank you to Tony Porco and, and uh, along with uh, Dr. Gunning, thank you. And the whole SIS manufacturing team for hosting us today. What I love getting out of that, I call it the bubble, Queen's Park and meeting the, the hardworking women and men here in the north and all the cities and it was just great to meet each and every one of you because you folks are the ones that make things happen. It's also great to see members of the Sioux and District Prospectors Association and some of our province's junior miners. Junior miners are the backbone of our mining industry, supporting so many good paying jobs right across the province. We're so, so grateful for all the hard work that you do, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for getting in there and contributing to our, to our economy. As people of the Sioux are well aware, Northern Ontario was blessed with some of the most mineral-rich deposits anywhere in the world. This includes the high-demand critical minerals like nickel, cobalt, and lithium, needed for advanced technologies clean energy solutions, and the electric vehicles of the future. Unlocking these resources and getting them to market represents an incredible economic opportunity for our province for generations to come. 
That's why last year our government released our first ever critical mineral strategy to unleash the economic potential of our northern minerals and to build up our homegrown supply chains, connecting the industry resources and workers in northern Ontario to the future of clean steel and electric vehicles. This five-year plan includes strategies to attract investments and jobs into the sector, working with our colleges and universities to address skills gaps in mining, and increasing government incentives for mineral exploration and development. And today, as part of that plan, I am pleased to announce that our government has invested more than $5.8 million to help junior mining companies to explore for critical minerals. These investments are part of our Ontario Junior Exploration Program. It's a $29 billion, uh, sorry, a $29 million, I wish it was billion, a $29 million fund to increase mineral exploration, growth and job creation in the province, particularly in northern and indigenous communities. Through these targeted investments, we're building a Made in Ontario battery supply chain ecosystem, connecting the minerals needed to make EV batteries. To the automakers and battery manufacturers leading the transition, like General Motors in Ingersoll or LG in Stellantis in Windsor. My friends, we are investing in mineral production. We're bolstering clean steel production, including a $500 million investment towards DeFasco's Green Steel Project in Hamilton and support for the new low emission electric arc furnace right here in Sault Ste. Marie at Algoma, where I'll be visiting shortly uh, after this. We're also investing in battery production and final assembly so that the cars of the future and the batteries that power them will be built right here in Ontario by Ontario workers from start to finish. My friends, our government has a plan that's building all of Ontario, whether you live in Toronto or the GTA, Brockville, Windsor, or right here in the Sioux. We're making sure every inch of our province, every person and community benefits from our investments to support economic growth and protect jobs. We're building roads and highways to keep people and goods moving. We're making historic investments in employment and training programs to ensure Ontario's workers have the skills they need for the jobs of today and of the future. We're breaking ground on new homes and new infrastructure projects to keep up with the population growth. And we're building a strong economy that will capitalize on every advantage that Ontario has. But as we navigate global economic uncertainty, we know there's more to do. We must stay focused. We can't take anything for granted. And our government will continue to work tirelessly to create the conditions to attract investments and jobs in the Sioux and across this province. I look forward to working with our great miners and our entire mining sector to realize our industry's true potential. I want to thank you and may God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you. Okay, we'll now take questions. Just a reminder, it's one question, one follow-up. Good afternoon, Premier. Elaine Hi. De La Matia, Sioux Star. Hi. If minerals and mining are so important in Ontario, like you say today, and your government has repeatedly talked about developing and bring, building a road to the ring of fire, yes. how has, why hasn't that been done yet? Well, first of all, we're hoping the, the federal government is going to partner with us. I had a great discussion with the Prime Minister about getting this done. I had a great discussion with the Minister. But um, first of all, we've already put a billion dollars in. We're committed. So one billion dollars. Now we need the federal government to step up and, and support us. And we're well on our way with the environmental assessment in uh, Webaquay, First Nations, and Martin Falls. So they're going to be heading up the environmental assessment, which I'm really, really happy to have our First Nations community be involved in this. And it's not just about the road for the Ring of Fire. It's about the road for our First Nations community that will be able to get energy and fuel that otherwise would be flown in, food and health care. So it really works on all fronts, and it creates really, really good paying jobs. Uh, just a follow-up question. Yep. Um, funding to industries in these sectors are great, but Ontario is still experiencing a skilled labor shortage. 
uh, what more can your government do to ensure that um, we do have workers for the jobs for today and the future? And yep. is it time for the federal government to increase its immigration uh, laws to, to help more workers come into Ontario and Canada? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Thank, thank you for that. First of all, skilled trainings. We're putting uh, well over a billion dollars, I think it's 1.4 billion into training. Uh, skills right across all different sectors, no matter if it's mining or trades or so on and so forth. And uh, again, I've, I've talked to, I've been purple in the face with the federal government. We need people. Folks, I just want to remind you, before we took office, the previous Liberal government chased 300,000 jobs out of this province in every single sector. As we stand today, there's over 500,000 more people working today than there was four and a half years ago because we put the policies and the conditions and made an environment for companies to come in and invest. We're in a global economic battle with every other country out there, but we're winning. We're winning that battle. And on top of the 500,000 jobs that are created, we have 380,000 jobs available. How we say, you can't walk down a street in Ontario in any sector without, if you want a job, you can be hired. So I asked the federal government, we need to make sure that we bring people in here, skilled or unskilled. If they're skilled, they get a job right away. If they're unskilled, companies like SIS and other companies, uh, they'll be training them right away. And, and you know, isn't that a good thing that we, we have an economy uh, right now that's on fire. You look around the world, you look down south of the border, they had negative quarters. You know, you looked at the numbers of job creation last month. We created, all of us, not the government, but all of us, 62,000 new people are employed uh, last month than they were the month before, and the month before that, another 40,000, month before that, another 30,000, so it's working. The world wants our critical minerals. I have one rule. Don't take our critical minerals and go over wherever to Asia or Europe or US and start manufacturing batteries. You take our critical minerals, you're manufacturing batteries right here in Ontario, creating un uh, jobs for Ontarians. And uh, we just have to get moving on the, on the Ring of Fire Road. So hopefully the feds uh, heard me over the last few days. This will be the last question. Communities, including Sault Ste. Marie, suffer from mental health and addiction issues. And healthcare experts are saying that we're not making enough progress in those areas. In Sault Ste. Marie, we have a new uh, residential management facility that's still under construction. But even those experts say that that might not be enough, uh, enough beds for this community. What's your government doing to help these issues, not only in Sault Ste. Marie, but across the province? Well, th thank you for that. This is, uh, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about mental health and, and addiction. I don't think there's anyone in, in this, this uh, building right now that doesn't know a friend, a relative, you know, family member that have, uh, haven't gone through some sort of addiction or mental health issues. We're putting unprecedented amounts of money towards that 3.8 billion dollars unheard of anywhere in the country so that's 3.8 billion dollars we're investing in that making sure that we have areas in every single community if someone is feeling you know they, they have some challenges we'll be able to support them and maybe uh, Ross I'll, I'll hand this one over to you and you can talk about some of the the investments that we're doing uh, right here in Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you Premier and uh Thank you for the question, Elaine. I know you're well aware of a lot of the investments. I mean, you referenced the, uh, the Residential Withdrawal Management Services site, which is a $20 million build that our government funded uh, this past May, and construction is still ongoing. Uh, we have funded into so many wraparound supports, though, and you've certainly heard me uh, refer to this numerous times. We're focusing on uh, outpatient services uh, as well as inpatient services. We've made those investments into outpatient services and wraparound supports. Uh, right from our uh, early education days right into our post-secondary institutions to ensure that people are getting the help they need uh, when and where they need it most and to ensure that uh, we're, we're doing those things so that um, we, we don't want to see an individual end up in the hospital. We, we want to make sure that they're getting the help 
that they need uh, before they end up in that type of an environment. And so these investments are continuing to be made. And certainly, uh, as you are well aware, we've been working very closely with uh, our, our new mayor, Matt uh, Shoemaker, on trying to secure additional supports for the community. And uh, we'll continue that advocacy on a go-forward basis and uh, continue to collaborate and work together to achieve those goals. Because uh, I think, as the Premier has just noted, uh, everybody is touched by, by mental health and addictions in some way, shape, or form. And we're going to continue working towards doing everything in our power to, to, help, uh, to help curb that crisis. Thank you. And right, right, right before uh, I hand it over to Minister Peary to talk about the great things we're doing, mental health and addiction up in, in Timmins, we're the only government in the history of Ontario that actually dedicated uh, a minister to mental health and addictions. We take that seriously, and he's doing a great job, Minister Tobolo, and we're just going to continue focusing on it. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to George. Yeah, that's exactly the point that I want to make. Um, Michael Tibolo has been in Timmins probably every second month, starting from the time that I was the mayor in Timmins. We've had uh, extra dollars, $2.2 million that have been applied to the uh, application of mental health beds in Timmins. It's a concern from every city in the north, uh, and perhaps, really, perhaps most acute in the north. But I can't say enough and how much thank, thanks I have to give to the Premier for appointing an individual that, uh, like Michael Tibolo to, to head off, or head up the uh, mental health facility for Ontario. And it's working, and the dollars are being applied specifically that I know of in the city of Timmins. Ross talks about Sault Ste. Marie. I'm sure the things there, and I realize there were just announcements in, in Thunder Bay and Kenora as well, but it's all on the back of the initiative um, that the Premier led off on mental health by appointing uh, Minister Tibolo. He's doing a fantastic job. Thanks. Excellent. Well, thanks again to everyone at SIS. Tony, you got a championship team over here. I love the people, the Sioux. They're, they're down to earth, you know, salt of the earth, as I always say, and I love coming here to visit. So all the very best. God bless. Thanks, everyone.